Welcome to Pioneer Parent Academy. Today's session is titled Instructional Resources. Our guests today include Batesville School District Literacy Specialist Molly Hill and Batesville School District Math Specialist Alicia Cummings. Today, these ladies are going to be sharing a nice overview of both our literacy and math programs, as well as instructional resources that can support your child's learning. Our first guest is Miss Molly Hill. Thank you, Molly. Yes, I'm happy to be here um, sharing some about our literacy programs. Again, my name is Molly Hill. I am the literacy specialist and this is my contact information and I'll share this again with you guys at the end. So today, some things that I want to go over with you all are the curriculum overview, what we see most regularly in the majority of our K-5 classrooms. I want to show you the Batesville School District Literacy website, where to find it and how to navigate it, some things that you're going to see there. I'm also going to show you the Arkansas RISE website. This is a website put out by our State Department. We're going to go over just a couple of our digital library resources. And then finally, I'm going to share with you a few resources that you can use at home with your student. So as part of the curriculum overview, one of the things that we have is Hegarty. Hegarty is a phonemic awareness curriculum. And so we're going to go ahead and jump over to the why, why it's important. The lack of phonemic awareness is something that determines the likeliness of um, or the likelihood of someone being able to read. So you can think of phonemic awareness as a foundational block, a building block for reading. So some ways that that is supported with your student, primarily in the K-2 classroom, is through um, practice in isolating, blending, segmenting, moving sounds around. Um, and you can read here on the screen, what is phonemic awareness? It is just understanding that words are built through sounds. Those sounds are called phonemes. And so if you think of the word cat, we know that cat as adults and fluent readers, we are able to know that cat is built up by the sounds at, and that is foundational to being able to read. So this is a program that you'll see and you'll hear some about um, Hegarty. And so for our core instruction in our K-5 classrooms, we have Amplify CKLA. CKLA stands for Core Knowledge Language Arts. And our classrooms use the second edition, which is our most current up-to-date um, curriculum that we are using. It is um, based off of the science of reading. And so scientifically based um, instruction that we have for our students and how they're gonna learn to read and understand text the best. And so we use this for our kindergarten through fifth grade classrooms right now. And it has an approach where students have all of the things they need to learn for reading included in this curriculum. So everything is connected, kind of flows together. In kindergarten, first and second grade, students have a skills, which is where they're learning letters, letter combinations, those sounds, really learning how to read and put that together phonetically with phonics. And then they have a separate section called knowledge where it's building backgrounds, giving stories, um, really foundational in social studies and science, lots of content that they're reading about and learning. And then in third, fourth and fifth grade, all of that is together with that knowledge strand. So ask your student or their teacher, um, you can ask all about that. And I'm actually gonna share with you a resource that you can go in and see exactly what your student is learning. So in CKLA, you can see that there are student readers. Those look a little bit different in K2 than they do for 3-5. K2, they're like mini chapter books and they are built with words that the students are gonna be able to decode and read based on what they've learned in the curriculum. And then third, fourth and fifth grade, it's going to be really like a chapter book that they're reading and it's gonna have lots of different content based on what unit of study they're in. And so it's a, the students are able to listen to it on the CKLA hub that we're gonna talk about in just a second, or they can read it out loud with partners or their teacher might choose to read it. They look at reading those student readers in lots of different formats. In K2, they also have access to a sound library. This is a digital component where students can click on 
um, a little play button. There is a picture here on the side of the slide of what that looks like. So students can hear the sound that the letter or letters make. There's a little song that goes with it. There's a video that they can watch that just helps um, them hear that more and get that foundational skill of knowing, hey, these letters together or this letter makes this sound. Um, third, fourth, and fifth grade have a vocabulary app. So in a similar way that it's a digital resource, they're able to log in. Students are able to log in to their own account and work individually through a vocabulary app where they learn the vocabulary word and practice it. And then they're gonna see those words throughout the curriculum throughout the whole year. All grade levels have student activity books. Teachers use these in lots of different ways, but it's just a way that they can practice the skills that they're learning in the classroom. And then lastly, you can see they have the CKLA hub. This hub is just access to some of these things that you see here on the screen. Um, and students have their own individual login through their Batesville School District Google account. So they're able to access that and you can look at the text that they're reading. Um, you can look at that sound library that can work on that vocabulary app. Um, and so these are really great materials that we have in that K-5 curriculum. So what can you do at home to support your students with this curriculum? You can read as much as you can. I know that we have busy lives, but reading just 5, 10, 15 minutes a day is going to be really helpful. Um, some things that you can do when you're reading with your student is do a mirror reading. You read a sentence and make sure you have lots of expression and you're observing that punctuation and then have your, your child just repeat that back so that they can hear the way, hey, when I'm reading and I'm telling a good story, my voice might go up at the end when I have a question. How are you today? You, you say that a little bit differently and they're hearing that. Um, you can talk to your student about the text that they're hearing in class or things that they're reading. You can ask them, hey, what stood out from you and what you read today? Was there anything that you didn't understand? That's a great way to just kind of gauge where your student is with what's happening in the classroom. Um, there's a few more questions listed below. And then lastly, some things that you could do is have your child read aloud some things that they've written to you. Um, when they write things in class and they bring that home, have them read that aloud to you or to a stuffed animal or call a friend and have them read that out loud. That gives you a really good idea of, hey, are they reading this and writing this? Um, giving them practice with their own words that they've written. So now that we've gone over the curriculum overview, I wanted to show you all where you could access the Batesville School District Liter Literacy website. Now, a direct link to this will be below, but it can be a little bit tricky to find it. So I'm going to actually share um, my browser and show you where you can find this. So if you go to the Batesville School District website, you can Google Batesville School District or you can put in batesvilleschools.com, but this is a really great place where you can find the things that you need from Batesville. So where you're going to find this website is under Departments and Programs. We're going to look at a couple different things to find here, so this is a great way to get familiar with our website. So if you go down to curriculum, if you think about literacy, curriculum, curriculum is just the things that we learn in school that can kind of help you remember where to find it. And you click this little down arrow, it says literacy programs. Once you click on literacy programs, it's going to open up the Batesville School District Literacy website. What I want to draw your attention to is the parents tab. So I'm going to go right here over at the top and click on parents. I'm going to show you guys all of the things here. We're going to talk about these things a little bit more in depth. But across the top, you can see it says, how can parents understand the science of reading? This is chock full of great information and links that you can click on and read just to learn a little bit more about what is happening in the classroom. What are some things that you can do to support your child at home? There is a link to our CKLA, our curriculum that we spoke about, a direct link to a caregiver's website that you can access. Um, that just gives even more detailed information than I've given you in this video. There's more information about Hegarty that leads you to um, some videos put out by them that you could watch. So lots of things that you can read about and click on at the top of the website. 
And then below, you can see there are a few different sections of things that you can use with your child at home. When you scroll down, you see there's a section called decodable readers and books, and these give you clickable links that you can go to to access books with your students. So there's lots that are for free. We're going to talk a little bit more about Renaissance, the Mayan, and AR reading, but this gives you a direct link to all of those things. Scooting down a little bit more in our, um, on the website, there are just resources, things that you can click on, um, the Hegarty Phonemic Awareness. You can go to the RISE website that I'm going to show you guys how to um, navigate here in just a second. And you can even go to our Batesville School District Pinterest site. So these give you a direct link there. Next, I have just taken everything I think that you guys might need and put it in the same website. Um, this, these are a collection of the RISE newsletters that are put out the first of each month. These newsletters are put out by the Arkansas Department of Education and they are made for you guys. They are made for parents. They are great for teachers to read through. It gives activities, links, videos, podcasts, challenges that you can do with your student in each one. And so I've linked all of those since the very first one in March of 2021. And so always check back here if you'd like to get that, um, that document that you can read through. And then if you scroll all the way down, we have a building library. We are building this library of literacy tips um, for families. These tips are created by your kids' teachers. Batesville School District teachers are um, just talking to you guys in short clip videos about things that you can do at home with your student. So these are an excellent resource for you. They're located on, um, on YouTube, but then they can be housed here. So however you see them is great, uh, but I wanted to let you know where you could find them. So when we go back to our, um, our original presentation, our next thing, if you remember from our, our list of things that we were gonna talk about, is the Arkansas RISE website. So the Arkansas RISE website is put out, like I said, from the Arkansas Department of Education, and it is for teachers and our communities. So I'm gonna show you guys where you can go. So this will be a direct link in the comments or in the description probably of this video. Um, but you can just Google RISE Arkansas, and that's gonna pull this website right up. And here you can learn a lot about what is the science of reading? What are some things that we can do? There's lots and lots of clickable um, links and legislation. Um, there are uh, activities that you can do here. These are the big five. This is what our science of reading, um, what RISE Arkansas is founded on. RISE stands for the Reading Initiative for Student Excellence, and that is an all over the state thing. That's an Arkansas thing that you are going to be able to, um, you can research and look up and know that your student, no matter what grade they're in, they are getting this really good foundational instruction based on how individuals learn to read. So you can read more about this here, and then you can also access family resources from this site. Um, click about what the, what does that mean? How can you help? They're always updating this website and giving great ideas. So this is an excellent website for you to be able to look at and use for your reference. Next, I wanna share with you a digital library that you can use that your student has access to. Um, and we're actually gonna find this back on the Batesville School District website. And it is Accelerated Reader. You may have heard of AR from your student before. Um, Accelerated Reader is a program that we use in Batesville School District to help our students take a quiz or an assessment over the books that they're reading. And this helps the student and their teacher to know hey, this kid really understood what they were reading, or they might need a little bit of help making some connections to their text. Um, and then as a part of the Accelerated Reader Program, we have also um, a program called MyOn. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like by actually logging into My Daughters. And so the way that you find this website is by going to the Batesville School District website and clicking for students, because this is a resource for students and your your kid probably knows exactly how to get here so they'll click on renaissance learning 
and they'll have a login. Here, where they'll log in with their unique login information that they have been given. If you don't know it and if they don't know it, I encourage you to reach out to your school. It is probably your school's media specialist that gives that to you. So reach out to your kid's teacher um, and they should be able to help you log in. So we're gonna click, I'm a student and I'm gonna log in with my daughter's information here. She doesn't mind, she's in the third grade. And you can see there's a lot of little tabs on the side. Myon is one that is a personalized digital library based on um, your students, what they like, what they've clicked on, what they've read before. And what they can do is they can get on Myon and they can start looking at books that they like. And once they click on a book that they like, it can read it out loud to them. They can read it on their own. And all you need is internet in some way. So you can actually access this on your phone, on a tablet, on a gaming system that has internet access, on a computer. And so this would be a really great way and a great resource for your student to be able to read any kind of book that they might be interested in that's on here. And then once they're done reading that book, they can pop on over to Accelerated Reader or straight from Myon and take a quiz and show their teacher, hey, I read this book and I really liked it and I understood what was going on. So those are both really great resources for your student to access text when they're not in school. And then lastly, EPIC is a really great program that is free for educators. Um, it is not free for parents. So before you look into it, please reach out to your kid's teacher because they should have a class code um, where they could go in and access those books as well. Lastly, I wanted to share with you some resources that you could print off at home if you had access to do that. And these are actually from the Florida Center for Reading Research, FCRR for short, and you can Google FCRR org is actually the website that you could go to and this gives tons of te teacher resources and student centers that they can do at home so if you go over to this website you are on student center activities and you can choose whatever grade your student is in so if i wanted to pick a kindergarten lesson I'm gonna scroll on down and show you all of these links are printable games that they can play. Um, it goes down pretty far. And this is all in our kindergarten and first grade. So I'm gonna go back up and click on one. I'm gonna look under rhyme and look at rhyme memory match. So here this tells me, okay, students are gonna recognize rhyming words. Here's some things that they're gonna do. And it gives me all of the rhyming picture cards. So you could print these out, cut them out, and then play memory where they put them all out, turn one over, turn another, another one over and say, hat, spoon, nope, those don't match. I need to flip them back over. And this gives students practice in rhyming and identifying that rhyme. So this is this website is full of games that you can um, that you can do, that you can can look at and print off. This is what that looks like when you can just print it off and play that game and has it all ready for you. And so that gives a really great resource that you could use at home if you have access to printing, um, or you could even talk to your student's teacher about that. And then lastly, Reading Rockets is a really excellent resource. It's founded in the science of reading. Um, it is chocked full of videos and articles and podcasts um, that you could, you could read and look at and really dive into that is based on the science of reading. And that is just readingrockets.org. It is a website. Um, it's really excellent for you to check out. Um, you can search in the search bar if you're looking for great apps for students to use who have dyslexia. You can type that in and it might bring up articles for you to read or some videos that you could watch. This is a great resource for you to use and it will be linked below as well. So if you have any questions or things that you wanna reach out about, if you're like, oh, what did she mean? How exactly could I find this? Please feel free to email me. I love talking with parents and helping in any way. So please reach out um, and use these resources. You are who they are made for. Thank you. My name is Alicia Cummings and I am the math specialist for the Batesville School District. 
My job is just to support teachers um, in teaching and student learning within the math curriculum. And so today we are just going to go over kind of what that curriculum looks like, what your child is learning in the classroom, and ways that you can support that learning at home. So just a quick overview, we're going to go over the curriculum, specifically Eureka Math, that it has been adopted by the Batesville School District. We're going to dive into a few of those curriculum components. Um, we're going to look at our digital companion and intervention tool that goes alongside our curriculum in math. We're going to look at our digital library resources and finally kind of look at some, some things that you can do to support your child's learning at home and some family resources. We use a piece within the curriculum called a number talk. Number talks are just short daily exercises that teachers do in a discussion type forum with students that help build conceptual knowledge. Students use their mental math to calculate and use higher level thinking strategies uh, to solve. Number talks support fluency uh, within um, math problem solving and so this is a really great um, oracy piece uh, within math that where students get to justify and explain their thinking and defend um, strategies and the way that they are problem solving. It also helps with the relational thinking piece in math which really helps us to understand and build number sense. Um, why this is important is just the lack of number sense and that relational thinking is a very powerful determiner in the likelihood and failure in math or success in math and being able to think relationally just means understanding the relationship between numbers and the relationships um, between operations and how those all connect together and how they're useful in understanding one can help you understand um, another one. A big essential question in math is just using what you know to figure out what you don't know and Number Talks just creates that environment um, and those discussions to take place where students are learning from each other just guided and facilitated by the teacher. Going forward into Eureka Math is our core knowledge curriculum for math in the Batesville School District K-5. Um, Eureka Math has mathematical progressions and that are expertly crafted through their modules. Eureka Math um, is, like I said, used through kindergarten and fifth all the way up to fifth grade. It has several lesson components that we will kind of look at here. Um, first, in every lesson, there is a counting um, activity that is built in. This is really important in kindergarten where counting is the most essential. It's an essential standard there and counting um, is important. It does go all the way up through the grades. Older grades typically use a lot of skip counting by twos, threes, fours, fives, or tens. They relate that back to multiplication, relating that back to division, and really um, just is a lot of practice for those foundational skills that they need to apply that knowledge. The next piece is the fluency piece, which we talked a lot about in the number talks. Um, that is just using what they know, really practicing their automaticity in solving problems. The next uh, component within the lessons are the concept development and problem set pieces. This is the guided practice portion of the lesson. And the concept development is really the heart of these lessons. It is where students are discovering and learning new content, new concepts. They are just making all of those discoveries. They are addressing any misconceptions that they may have um, about any content. And then they move into an application word problem where they are able to take those skills and apply them in a real world type of way using really higher level math problem solving skills. And again, going back to that essential, trying to figure out what we know so that we can use that um, to determine what we don't know. The exit tickets are very short, um, just a couple of questions usually within the lesson that teachers can use to assess student learning and student knowledge of the lesson, of the content, and they use those to make determine next steps for 
um, intervention or moving forward um, within the sequences of the lesson. Zern finally um, within the curriculum is our digital companion and intervention tool that we use alongside the curriculum. It is access to an on-camera teacher and I will we will go into Zern just a little bit more um, in just a little bit but this is a great resource for teachers and uh, students and parents to be able to see the lessons again, provide lessons from a new perspective, uh, students that are having uh, homework or do needing to work on other things with math at home, uh, they can pull this up. The lessons are very interactive. They're not just watching a video. They do have to interact with the lesson and so it is very engaging and checking their knowledge throughout all of the checkpoints as it moves them through. So how can you support your child at home within math? If it is possible, counting is the biggest thing that we can do for our elementary children. Counting um, is the basis for all of the other mathematical standards that we are going to be learning. Even just a few minutes a day is very helpful. Rather, that's just rote counting in the car or while you are making dinner, um, they are counting cereal or beads or um, beans, rice, anything that you just have laying around access to, um, mismatched puzzle pieces or um, Legos, just anything that they can uh, touch and move and to help build their one-to-one -one correspondence, as they say, and they number they're touching an object is really, really helpful in building um, those three cardinality, ordinality type rules in math that they will need to be successful. Finding, um, I did list several examples um, in this slide and finding opportunities where they can apply their learning um, and that the things that you can do to interact with your child in math. We are going to dive into Zern just a little bit so I can give you uh, just kind of seeing what that on-camera teacher looks like. So I'm just going to um, do, this one is from a third grade lesson. Hey Zerner, I'm Miss Joseph here with Kayla and Ethan. Today's lesson is a math chat. In math chats, we'll learn something new together. Before every math chat, make sure you have a pencil, headphones, and your Zern student notes. Let's jump in. We'll start with these bananas. When you solve a problem on Zern, we give you directions so you know what to do. How many bananas are in this bunch? Now you answer the question and we'll talk about it after. Press the audio button if you want to hear me read the directions. There are three bananas in this bunch. Here are some more bunches of three bananas. We can use repeated addition to find the total number of bananas I have. Three plus three plus three. Okay, so that was just a little piece of a third grade lesson that kind of shows you how the on-camera teacher is teaching the lesson to them. They Students do have to interact. You saw where it asked how many bananas we had to type in a number. It does have those checkpoints that were notated by the circles that you saw at the bottom where students do have to engage with the lesson. Um, just uh, to, so we can see a higher grade level, we'll look take a very short look at an eighth grade lesson. Today, we'll continue focusing on the slope of lines. Slope tells you how steep the line is. It's the change in vertical distance for a given change in horizontal distance. So here on this line, for a given change in horizontal distance like this, I don't need that much vertical change to get back to the line. It's not very steep. The slope is not large. But if the line was steeper, the amount of vertical distance for the same given horizontal distance is much larger. The line is steeper, so the slope would be greater. What about these two lines? Which has a larger slope? So that just kind of lets you see just a very quick look on what, um, what the on-camera teacher within Zern looks like. Um, it kind of walks through the lesson. Some of those concepts, especially the higher up uh, our students get in math, becomes harder and harder for parents. It's just a while since you've done those things, worked in that content. You were not, 
there for that lesson at school like your child was. So it's hard to help with homework. This is a really great tool where students um, can access the lesson that they were taught um, in their classroom and get that instruction from the on-camera teacher. Again, work through another guided practice and then be able to complete their homework. So this is really great. It's also great for parents to sit in and also watch that on-camera teacher to get a better idea of what their student is learning in class. Next, this is just some other homework help options. Um, not a full lesson like you would get in CERN, but these uh, activities are, or these resources are really great for homework help. Um, the first one here is access to um, digital online uh, manipulatives that can be used for any grade, um, but specifically for younger students, probably finding these the most helpful. Um, there are counters and 10 frames, base 10 blocks, pattern blocks, the value disk. Those are referenced a lot in the Eureka Math curriculum. Um, and if you just click on one, it will open it up for you and students are able to, to build math problems. They can use these to help them solve in any way that they need, um, just using all of those different um, manipulatives there, the ones that they need. It has fractions. Um, so it can be used in higher grades, but this is a really great tool for you to use if you don't have access to a lot of materials at home or you can't, or it's something that they're using very specifically in class. Sometimes it's really helpful to use that exact same material, but you might not have that at home. This is a great website where they can still access those same materials they're learning with at home. The uh, next one here is Khan Academy. Teachers do use this resource a lot in their classrooms. Unlike Zern, it is just a video. There is no interaction or, um, or engagement from the student in these videos, but they are very, very helpful in um, reteaching content. So you can go in here, find the grade, find the concept or the content that um, your child is working on and it will go through step-by-step -step videos, kind of teaching and laying out what that looks like. It goes all the way up into high school. So that's very helpful and starts, um, of course, with pre-K. So this is a really great resource for homework help if your child is, is studying slope of a line and you're not really sure, we've done the zone lesson and we just need something else, this is also a really great tool to use. Math Celebrity is also um, a really great tool. Um, when it loads in just a second, it will we'll be able to type in a math problem and I'm just going to type one in just really quickly just for purposes of us seeing what it looks like. When your student is completing um, math homework at home and they bring it to you and they ask you to check these problems, sometimes it's really hard if you haven't used um, the level of algebra or just the order of operations, things that they're learning in class. Sometimes it's been a long time since us parents have used those strategies, applied that knowledge, and so we're kind of rusty at it. But this is a really great tool. Um, if you just type in whatever problem your child is working on within their homework, you can see it breaks it down for you step by step and how to solve that. And lastly, it does give you the answer. So you could check your child's math homework very quickly um, just by the answer or just tell them this: these you need to work again. Additionally, it does have this video at the bottom. Most of them have um, a small video kind of showing how to uh, solve this type of equation or other type of problem that you've typed in. So it also has the directions on how to type things in like fractions and exponents, um, anything like that. It has all of the directions to make sure you're typing it incorrectly so you are getting the right answers. The last thing here is Desmos, is a graphing calculator. Graphing calculators are used in upper classrooms um, like algebra. Sometimes we don't have access to graphing calculators at home, but students may need them to do their homework with. And so this is just a really great website that has that graphing calculator here so students can use it so they can complete their homework if we don't have a calculator um, with these functionalities at home.
Just taking a look at um, a digital library of math games, some of these, the Reflex and Prodigy both, are located within your child's Clever account so they can log in that way. You can also just Google these and it will pull up. Um, if your child's teacher uses these in the classroom, they will have a class code where they can join and it will track their progress that way. You as a parent can also create your child's free account on these and use it at home. It is for fluency practice. There is, it's not going to teach your child how to solve the problems, but it is a really great resource for just practice in solving problems. Um, it goes across all different operations and functions. So you can set grade levels, age levels, or you can choose skill level that you would like them to practice on and they can do that. The other um, resource here is called Subitizing Tree and it is a really great app that can be downloaded on a phone or a tablet um, and it is great at um, subitizing practice. Subitizing is just being able to recognize number sets very quickly without having to count them um, and this is really great uh, practice skill for pre-k, kindergarten, first, second on up students. Um, being able to have that skill and recognize without counting is a really great skill that they practice in the classrooms and that they need. And so this app is really fun and engaging um, and you can download you can download that on anything that supports um, that supports apps. Um, finally, um, printable math resources for home. This is a website that you can go to that has printable math resources and games. So you can just click on the links. It has um, all of the materials that you would need and you would just print those out, cut them out. You can have them at home. So it goes all the way up. It does start um, for younger students and then goes into the higher grade levels as well with multiplication. It has the number docs number dots it has base 10 blocks so it does also have those manipulation tools i showed you on the website where um, those were digital manipulatives this website also has um, manipulatives for you to print out going down just a little further you'll get to the games where it has lots of different games when you click on them it goes through the instructions and how to play the game and you're able to print these out and have them um, your students can play them in the car or at home or um, at any time, like family game nights or any of these would be really great to incorporate um, math games into that. So this is just another resource for you to use. If you have access to a printer, these would be a really great resource for you. Again, um, this is my contact information here. You can email me um, anytime. Um, I am more than happy to share any other resources that, that you're needing or helping you find access to any of the things we've talked about. If you have specific questions about specific skills or content that you need help with or you have questions about, I would love to talk with you about those and help find those resources for you. This concludes our Pioneer Parent Academy session titled Instructional Resources. Thank you, Molly and Alicia, for this fabulous information. I can see how this will really help our parents as they are working with their children at home. Thank you so much for this. Um, if you would like to request more information, please contact Molly Hill or Alicia Cummings at their emails listed in the slide presentation, or you may also complete the Google form that is uh, located in the social media post below. And uh, thank you for viewing this session and stay tuned for more Pioneer Parent Academy sessions that will be coming up in the next few weeks.